All right, so it's every NBA team's biggest disappointment, according to Bleacher Report. This article was actually from like five days ago, so some numbers might be a little off. Anyway, Westbrook. Lakers are 12 points per 100 better with him off the floor, shooting 54% at the rim, which is, of course, not good enough. 25% on threes. The turnover rate's high. The Lakers are getting outscored by 12 per 100 when Davis and Westbrook play without LeBron. Yeah, I mean, it's been up and down so far. For what it's worth, his last few games, he has been more efficient. Like, he shot, I think, like, four for seven on jump shots in the last game against the Spurs. He was efficient against the Wolves. They also lost by a lot. The turnovers have still been rough. I feel like it's just going to be a bumpy road all the way to the end with the Lakers, and I think they can still win it even with all of that. But I don't think they're ever going to reach this basketball perfection thing with Russ. I think there's always going to be the time where he's taking a jump shot you don't like, or it's just a wild pass out of bounds or whatever. But if they can just meet in the middle enough where he's setting screens, cutting to the rim, not shooting as much, then perhaps it can be just good enough. But of course, if LeBron is not healthy, then none of that matters. Now let's get to everybody else. Atlanta, the defense. Yeah, I think a lot of it is Clint Capella, man. I just think he's not where he was at last season physically. Maybe he's playing through something or he didn't have enough time to practice in the offseason. I don't know, but I mean, you go down their roster and DeAndre Hunter is now going to be out for a while because he just had a wrist thing. They just don't have a lot of defenders, so Capella had to be great for them to hold up on that side of the floor. Although they say teams are shooting 82% at the rim when it's just Capella, 70% when it's just Collins. That's an interesting stat that I didn't know. Celtics, Jason Tatum shot profile. Yeah, I've talked about it enough. Do I need to say anything more? The only thing I will say, I want there to be more off-ball movement similar to like Paul George or Kevin Durant and more pick and roll. Get him going downhill, stop with these post-ups. I mean, it's not like you can never do a post-up, but I just feel like sometimes they lean into it too hard. The Nets, James Harden's struggles inside the arc. Yeah, I'm choosing not to be that concerned about this. It's James Harden, I think he's going to be fine. Uh, to me, the biggest disappointment with the Nets is still that Kyrie just isn't there. The Hornets' interior defense. Yeah, I mean, they've been looking for a five for a while. They got Plumlee now, and he's okay. Weren't they rumored for Drummond at one point, like a year ago or something? Not that I think Drummond would have fixed their problem, but they were desperate for a five. Uh, I don't know. I guess if the Magic are really forced to pick between Wendell or Mo Bamba, maybe the Hornets could jump on that. Or speaking of the same team, maybe Robin Lopez, if you think he has anything left in the tank as a rim protector. Vooch is shooting. Yeah, it's been rough. A lot of pick and pops, a lot of spotting up, and he's simply got to knock him down. But the other alarming thing is that he's also had some rough games trying to finish around the rim, which you would not expect from Vooch. Uh, for his career, he's shooting about 66% at the rim. This year, he's at 50%. That's not going to work. The Sexton situation for the Cavs. Yeah, I don't know what else it would be. I feel like everything else is kind of checked positively for them. Given their expectations, you know? I mean, they've got the next Kevin Garnett and Jared Allen's looking like he was worth the contract. Sure, Darius Garland didn't take a massive jump, but I think he'll live with it as of now. Rubio has been a pretty steady backup point guard, even if, you know, it's still Rubio. You're going to have some shooting woes sometimes. The random thing that I'm a fan of with the Cavs is that Dean Wade starts a lot of the time. And Perzingis everything. Yeah, we can just move on. Well, actually, I want to say this. For all the talk about how the Mavs suck, they're 8-4 and four at the moment. What I would be interested to see if they go to more, which they've already done a bit, is uh, Luka, Brunson, and Hardaway together, just as much as possible. Because I checked this on NBA.com. Those three together have an offensive rating of like 118, which would be by far and away the best in the league this season. MPJ's offensive malaise, yeah. Now he's already missing some time. Very weird, man. We all saw him miss a wide-open shot. On a fast break, we've seen him miss jump shots that he made. Yeah, I mean, if if he was his normal self, honestly, Denver, would they be contending with the Warriors for the one seed? And Pistons, the fun factor. Listen, man, give Cade another few games to where he can really get going to what he's supposed to be. And let's see, all right? The Warriors, the offense without Steph. So, their offense does fall off a cliff when Steph sits. However, their net rating is minus one which is basically neutral, which is still way better than it was last season. So in a way, it's still kind of a win that they're not the worst team in the league when Steph is sitting. Kevin Porter Jr. at point guard for the Rockets. 
because these young dudes, they're, I mean, they're playing, but in terms of a structure, in terms of efficient shots, in terms of not turning the ball over, listen, Rockets fans, you have things to be excited about. You got a lot of young dudes with, with potential, but in terms of right now, yeah. The Pacers, third quarters of doom. The holy moly, that's a bunch of minuses. You know what, though? I'm going to choose to believe the Pacers are a little better than their record. They're 6-8. and eight. They've lost a number of really close games already. The team is talented. Carlisle's a good coach. I would not be surprised if by the end of the season they're contending for something amongst the playoff spots. Clippers, point guard rotation. So again, this was written about five days ago. Since then, Reggie Jackson's had a couple more games. He also had a rough one against the Bulls last night. Uh, look, man, I think with the Clippers, it's going to have to be with their defense. Has some of it been a little lucky? Sure. I mean, teams are shooting really bad from three against them. and But Batum is playing great team defense. They do a good job of collapsing around the rim. Uh, they're not, also not putting teams on the line that much this season. Yeah, I think the Clippers are definitely better than what I thought they were going to be. Jaron Jackson's variance in performances. Yeah, sometimes it's a lot of fouls. Other times it's not being able to handle physicality around the rim. The three-point shooting's good. The handle uh, still looks promising for a guy of his size. Am I concerned? Honestly, a little bit. I do fear that the Grizzlies are slowly going from the fun young team to the, all right, what does Ja Morant really have around him right now team? Uh, now, whether that actually means anything, I don't know. I mean, obviously they should not consider giving up on Jaron Jackson at all. Like, Although Desmond Bain is showing some signs as a scorer, and also they haven't had Dylan Brooks, and I mean, he's pretty up and down, but I think he helps them out overall too. Duncan Robinson's humanness from deep. Yeah, he's shooting 33% from outside right now. Uh, the Heat have also lost a few games lately here, but they did have that really good win in Utah. Jimmy's missed a couple. Uh, I'm not really concerned. I mean, it's not like they were going to win 65 games or anything. Like, every team, unless you're absolutely loaded, is going to have some skids here and there. The other thing I will say, and this is from the one Celtics game where the Celtics blew them out in Miami. If you get a switching defense that has a lot of tall defenders, how much does that neutralize Miami's off-ball action stuff? Now, they still have other things to go to, but I think it's something to think about. The Bucks wide-open shooting... I'm going to ax this right now. The Bucks' disappointment is that they've had their actual team for very few games. T-Wolves, the offense at large. Yeah, man. Towns is not the primary shot taker, which is still really weird. You've got Edwards. One game he goes four for five from outside. Next game he goes like two for nine. This one's bad too. 28th in turnover rate. Another thing I looked at was uh, Towns is only averaging two pick and rolls a game according to NBA.com. Now, maybe that's because he has a tendency to pop instead of roll. But even so, that seems a little low to me. Pelicans, Zion's non-timetable, yep, pretty much. Knicks, the starting five's defense. The Knicks allow wide-open threes more frequently than any team outside Houston. I'm sure some of this will swing back the other way. I think it's very difficult to go from great defense to bad defense when you don't make that many changes to the roster. Although, for what it's worth, Bullock... To Fournier, that's a little bit of a downgrade defensively, no doubt. But at the same time, I mean, it was a thing talked about last year, you know, are the Knicks getting a little lucky with opponents just missing threes? And, I mean, I don't think opponents are going to keep shooting 41% against them, but, yeah, this can happen. And Lou Dort's offense for OKC. Again, this article was written like five days ago, but in his last three games, he's had over 20 points. He went nuts from three against the Nets. I think the jumper is kind of wait and see, and that is important, no doubt. But in terms of his off-the-handle stuff, I think he looks pretty good. I don't know if you can run offense through him like that, but I think he can attack a closeout. I think he can do something in transition with the ball. For the season, he's at about 60% shooting at the rim, so there could be something there to his offense. Jalen Suggs, slow start. Yeah, I think Suggs is just adjusting to the size and speed of the NBA. And Phoenix, Cam Johnson's rut. Yeah, I mean, he's at like 34% now. I am going to use this little opportunity to say... That while I do not think there is a definite favorite in the Western Conference right now, if you make me pick a team, I'm going to go with the Suns. So, apologies to Jazz, Lakers, and Warriors fans. And Clippers or Nuggets fans, if your injuries get sorted out. Sixers, mounting absences. Yeah, they were looking good, then Embiid went down. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Dame slump, yep. The Aaron Fox's inefficiency, yeah man, a lot of jump shots. A lot of floaters, a lot of pull-ups, and... 
they're just not going in well enough. We have the report that Luke Walton's on the hot seat. He gets canned. I'm definitely doing a video about that. Then we can talk more about the team overall. Might I just say, if the Kings are ever going to clean house or something, which I don't really know if they should do because they have talent, obviously. But if they want to make a move, may I nominate the Boston Celtics to take on one of Harrison Barnes or Buddy Heald? Derek White's inconsistency? Man, I was so convinced he was awesome after the bubble. He was going nuts from three. He was attacking the rim like crazy. And it just hasn't happened. Should be said, DeJounte's up to like eight rebounds and eight assists a game. Chris Boucher for the Raptors. He uh, went from being kind of a savior last year for them to now it's, you know, the Siakam's playing center a bit. You got Kem Birch, who's solid. And suddenly Boucher, it's like, where, where is he, you know? And by the way, in case you didn't know, they've been starting Siakam at center since he came back. Utah, Clarkson's outside shooting. I'm going to choose to not care about this. I'm just guessing Clarkson will be all right. Wiz, Bertons. Yeah, I keep saying this. I think the amount of money they're paying him per year is fine, given how good he was that one season. But the length of the contract is rough. Yeah, and Wes Unsell Jr. as the coach. Different approach on defense. I don't know if he's going to be able to fit in. And can he fly around and dig in on ball handlers, but also close out to dudes in the corner? If he can, then I think Wes Unsell will like him. 